Hi guys, you're going to love this video all about Google Analytics and I'm going to show you the best Google Analytics reports for improving the amount of website sales or leads coming from your website. And that's what we all want, right? We all want more website sales or leads and that ultimately makes us more money from our website. Okay, so Google Analytics, first of all, it's important to realize it's not just a tool for understanding how much traffic you're getting each day, you know, what your top pages are and what your top traffic sources are. It's actually a tool that you can use to get much greater insights into what's going on with your website and understand which you know which pages have the most potential to improve first what isn't converting very well that if you improved therefore you would get many more sales and leads so i'm going to show you some of the best google analytics reports that if you learned these and made use of these you would quickly be able to understand what you should improve first on your website to increase the amount of website sales or leads coming from it okay Hope you enjoyed the video. Hi guys, welcome to the overview video for showing you the best Google Analytics reports for improving your website sales and leads. Okay, so I just want to point out the first page that you usually arrive on is the audience overview page. And as I was mentioning in the introduction there, this, this is an example of a page that while it's good because it tells you your overall traffic, it doesn't really give you particularly good insights into how to improve your website to increase your sales or leads. Okay, so the first report that I'm going to go to, and I'm going to go through these quite quickly because there's quite a few of them. I just want to give you an overview of each of the best ones to go through. But the, um, the first one I want to mention is the uh, conversions overview report. So what you want to do is you go to uh, conversions goals and then you click overview. And this gives you a good idea of how your main website goal is currently converting. So in this case, it's uh, completed purchase, 2.64% conversion rate which is uh, pretty good for an e-commerce website like this. Um, and what you'll need to do to change this graph here to get a trend line is you need to pick the goal up here. And this presumes you've set up your goal in advance for whatever your major goal may be. So maybe that's a sign up or a, a purchase of something. And uh, I won't go into that because that will take too long at the moment. And what you need to do is here is change this um, drop down to be instead of completions, goal one completions, you want this to be goal one conversion rate. So you can see what your goal conversion rate is here. And then you could change this up here to be uh, um, to change the, the date range on here to get an understanding. So if I want to go back to January, you would change this here and hit apply. And then you could change that to be by the week. So you can understand your conversion rate by the week and understand what may have influenced the conversion rate that week. So maybe you had a particularly good newsletter that went out or a campaign somewhere that did particularly well for conversion rates. So if you notice that, you would, you would, you could um, add annotations to this, and then obviously do more of that to help increase con um, the conversions on your website by your website sales or leads. So again, you can do this by month, and you can do this for any report. Okay. So this shows you the conversion rate by month. You can even do year over year to understand um, uh, compared to here, year of previous period, uh, previous year. So if you applied this, you can actually get an understanding of how your website is doing this year in comparison to last year. And that's really important for seasonality based websites. OK, so the next um, I'm going to take that off actually right now. Um, so the next one I want to show you is the e-commerce overview. And this is another way of get, getting to this really important information uh, that you'll need to understand and monitor in terms of conversion rate and what you'll need to optimize. So here you can see this is uh, the, where is it? E-commerce conversion rate for this website. So it's very similar to that conversion goal um, we just looked at, 2.56%. Okay, so the next report I wanna show you is the uh, site content all pages. Now, this is quite a simple report and this will tell you the top pages, i.e. the most seen pages on your website. So one of the key things to look at here is the bounce rate. Uh, and this is the amount of people that are leaving your website without looking at anything else. So here, the homepage has a 42% bounce rate. So that's, that's pretty reasonable. 40% is about average. So um, there's a bit of room for potential to improve that to decrease it, but not, not a great deal. But one of the other things I would strongly suggest you look at here is check to see if your key pages relating to your goals appear in your top 10. Because if they don't, it means that visitors are not getting to those very often. And you could uh, th therefore tweak your navigation or your menus or your call to actions to get people to those pages more often. Um, perhaps there's a features page that isn't here that should be, 
or there's a, there's a sign up page that you think that people are going to and they're not. So that's really important. Then one of the other the insights that I also do from this page is I want to figure out what, where people are going from the homepage um, next, because that will understand me what that will help me understand what people are looking at and clicking on most often and this the visitor intent. So in order to understand what people are clicking on, you can actually use tools like Hotjar and Crazy Egg, but in here, one of the best ways I like to look at that, um, you can use the in-page analytics, but it breaks quite often, which gives you a visual an analysis. I just um, simply pick the page I want to um, find out the next page is on, and I click here. So this is the home page. And then there's a tab up here. Navigation summary is pretty hidden, so most of you probably haven't ever seen this before. So you would click navigation summary, and then this tells you the previous page path and the next page path from the home page. So you can see here um, that the cross rope jump jump rope 2.0 is the next is the next most common page view seen. So 18% of people will go to this page, and then 18% of people will go to this infinity rope system. So you can so you can understand if people aren't clicking on what you expect them to, then you could move around that call to action. Uh, and, and get people to that page much better from your home page. So definitely a really important one to look at. So um, the, now this next report is the landing pages report. And now this to me is the single most important report that you can use to, to understand the performance of key pages on your website that if you optimize these and improve them, you would get many more sales or leads coming from your website. So uh, as I said, so it's called landing pages, and this is this is going to show you the pages that people directly arrive on your website. And this is really important to understand these because not only are a lot of people are going to be um, looking at these pages, it's also these pages also form the first impression of your website. And often visitors will judge your whole website based on what they see on your homepage. So if they don't like how it looks, if, if there's something on it that's confusing or missing, they're going to leave. So it's really important that you optimize these pages and pay particular attention to these. And then um, some of the key things you'll want to do on this page are is to, ch to change the uh, conversion or orientated information here, th th these three things here. So you'll need to change this to be the goal that you want to do this conversion rate analysis on. And this is, this is very important because this information isn't available on the top pages report. So this is another reason why this is really important, that you can only get this on the landing pages report. So you can understand in, uh, the conversion rates of your pages. So as this has changed to go one complete purchase, you can therefore see the purchase, the, the conversion rate for your purchase for coming from each of these pages. So you can see here the combos page converts very well, as does the home page, but the um, sizing help doesn't seem to have an influence in this case. Um, and some of the other pages here, the the, the, the the infinity rope starter system isn't converting as well as the site average, which is here, 2.66. Um, and, that's, and then here you can actually see where most of the um, um, purchases are coming from in terms of these pages. Another really important one to look at here is your bounce rate because you'll want to make sure that when people arrive on these pages, they're not leaving. Now, uh, anything over 40% is going to be high. So this page, 70% um, is high. So that could suggest that this needs some optimization to, to decrease the amount of people leaving on that web page. And it's really important to look at your article pages, your blog article pages, if you have those on here, to try and get those lower. Ultimately, you don't want people coming to your blogs, um, blog pages, and just leaving. You want to give them an incentive to act, to, to um, sign up for whatever incentive you're offering to, to, to get them sticking around on your website and coming back more often. So this is a really, really important um, um, report for you to look at very often and look at your whole top 10 pages here. Okay. So the next report I want to show you is the funnel visualization report. And this is under uh, conversions and funnel visualization. Now, um, this is where you set up a, this is where you've set up your conversion funnel in uh, for the goal of, for each of your major website goals. And here you put in the steps of your, your conversion funnel. And in this case, it's the checkout flow, obviously and the key pages that are in that. Now, this is quite a simplified checkout. There aren't many steps in it, but um, if you have multiple pages in your checkout, you would put them all on here and understand the drop-off rate between the key pages in your, your conversion flow, i.e. your checkout. Because if you understand the ones that have the highest drop-off rates, you can see here 66% um, from the checkout page completed to the next page, which is quite high. Usually the, um, the drop-off rate um, 
the actual abandonment rate from your shopping cart is about uh, seven, uh, 60, I think 69% on average. So here only 40, 44% are dropping off. So that's a very good conversion rate there. So if, if you saw that was particularly high between any of the steps in your checkout, you could think, oh, okay, let's figure out why um, these are not converting very well. They, maybe there's you're not showing signs of security on there. You're not sure you're not reiterating the benefits, or there's something confusing or broken on there. So these are good pages that to to monitor and uh, look at to in, increase the conversion rates based on what you see in this report. The next one is acquisition overview report, and that is under acquisition, and then overview. This gives you um, actually a, it's under all traffic channels. This is the actual overview confusing it's not the overview report doesn't actually give you as many insights so this gives you an understanding of um, how your traffic sources are converting and it's really important to, to understand this because you could have the best website in the world but if you have pretty crappy traffic that doesn't convert very well you're not going to get many website sales or leads so here you should uh, um, check out the, um, the breakdowns of the, the the major types of groupings of traffic source to understand how they're doing so here organic search 2.6 is, is about average for the, the, the website that you have, uh, the, the, the overall conversion rate for your website. So you'd look to see which ones of these are higher or lower and figure out why that might be the case. I would always look for email. Email should be on here and it should always be higher than your um, completed purchase, uh, your, your, than your completed purchase, in this case, uh, website conversion rate. Um, because these are people coming back to your website that should know what their um, that you should know a bit more about you and are likely to convert more in the future. That's in the same way, your paid search, if you're doing that, should be converting much more. And if you're doing social advertising, social media advertising, that should also convert higher. So this gives you a good overview of um, where your where your, um, your your major website goals are converting for your major traffic sources. Okay. Now it's important to drill down and get some more insights because this is just a good over high level overview. But what you want to do is you want to go to another one called Source Medium, which is under right next to the same one as Acquisition and then Source Medium. So here, um, this gives you a much more specific uh, breakdown of which websites and which combinations of emails that you're sending are converting the best. So again, you would look over here to, um, to see the, the conversion rate for each of those. So. Uh, here you can see that uh, the blog actually is sending them a lot of leads um, that are converting them into website sales, which is fantastic to hear. It's really important to set up a good blog to help you do that. Um, you can see other ones on here that their email is, is also converting very high, 4.52, which is, as I just mentioned, is really important to ensure that you increase that. And you can see that uh, Google Organic converts slightly lower. Uh, so those are, so those are good insights. You can look for other key websites that are pointing to you. So for example, this muscle and fitness website is not converting very well. So maybe it's pointing to the wrong page. Maybe the wording on that page isn't really um, yeah, helping your visitors understand what's going to be on the next page. So maybe you could reach out to that website and, and uh, help improve what that link is. Um, and maybe you could give them a special offer and an incentive uh, to increase the amount of sales you get coming from this referral. Okay, so that's really important that you understand this and each of your major sources. And if there's any on here that you expect to be on here, that's a good reason to look into that more and increase that to get it to be on this top 10 list. Okay, the next one is the device summary report. And this is really important to look at to understand um, uh, how your conversion rates are going to vary by device. So what you want to do is, uh, this is under audience and then technology and then oh sorry it's mobile uh, and then overview so here you can see a breakdown of, of of your desktop traffic in comparison to your mobile traffic in comparison to your tablet traffic so these are obviously the, the numbers but more importantly here again is this conversion section here so you can see here the desktop is 3.43 percent conversion rate in comparison to your mobile which is only 1.6 mobile is always going to be lower because you know, a lot of people are just going to be browsing and they're going to come home and purchase on the desktop or, or tablet in the future. But um, it, it, should, it, it shouldn't be dramatically low. It shouldn't be under 1% if, um, if this was 3.43% here. So this is really important to take a look at because you'll want to have a mobile optimized website 
and uh, not just a regular responsive website where you change the small things, you'll want to increase you know, the button sizes, um, what is shown on the main area of the, your homepage uh, page fold on mobile, because obviously there's not much space there to show key things. Uh, so that's really important to look at report. And then the next one I would show you is the browser, uh, is the browser and operating, sorry, is, is the browser and operating system here. So you can use this report to understand how your conversion rates are varied by a uh, type of browser. And this is really important because sometimes small differences in CSS can have a big impact on how your website shows to your visitors. And in some cases, it may even make something look very weird or may even break things. So it's really important to have a quick look regularly how your conversion rates are for your major browsers. So if there's anything very much below average, then you would think, oh, okay, um, that needs um, looking into in particular to improve that. But this website, they're doing a good job. They're all fairly about average, but I've seen many of these be um, much lower that when you look at them, indeed something has broken in their shopping cart, for example, uh, or doesn't look particularly good that is confusing people and making them not want to purchase. Okay, so one last thing I want to show you, and that is a dashboard. And you'll want to create a conversion dashboard using all the reports that I just showed you. And this is really important for you to create because this is going to help give you a really good overview of what's happening with key conversion rate optimization um, elements on your website involving all the reports that I just showed you. So as you can see here, I've already pre-made this one. You'll need to do this yourself. But you can see I've added in um, a, a graph for conversion rate for the um, completed purchase goal and users. So you can get a, a good understanding of this the last 30 days here. That's what the date range I've changed this up to here is to be. It even tells you who's online right now, which is quite nice. But then as you can see here, I've got the top um, landing pages along with the goal conversion rates. So you can monitor this along with the top 10 pages and the bounce rate the top uh, traffic sources, and then the, the, a bit more detailed for the traffic sources, new versus returning visitor, uh, um, browser devices, I've added those, and then some uh, some of the key success metrics, you know, overall complete, uh, complete pressure rate, total users, and total complete purchases. So that's really important. I highly recommend you add this to monitor. Um, you can also email it to yourself on, on a weekly basis, so that way you don't necessarily have to log into your tool, or have to remember to log into your tool. Um, and just to give you an idea of how you would add these, so for example, if I click on this, it will take you through to the, the full learning pages report. So here, and then what you need to do is um, on any of these reports that you wanted to add that are conversion related, you would click add to dashboard up here, and then you would choose the dashboard or whether a new one um, that you wanted to add it to, and then that you basically, um, you can add the table or the timeline. Um, so there's various different ways to do this. So I'm going to hit cancel out of that. So that's how you would add something to a dashboard. And then you can even um, customize the layout of the dashboard. Uh, this is the one I use because it um, gives you a column on the right-hand side. Hopefully you found these this best Google Analytics reports for increasing your website sales and leads are very useful. And start to learn what's going on on your website much better to figure out what you can improve first to increase your website sales and leads. Okay, thanks. Bye.